The pound buys $1.30 and €1.17. LBC weather, heavy rain for southern parts this evening, easing overnight. Clear spells across Scotland and northern England with a few showers. A chilly night with a frost in the north, a low of minus two. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Holly Jones. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. I have felt for some time that things simply weren't right. And when I was asked in August last year, uh, my thoughts on the current royal family, I very much made the point that I thought Harry had been this soldier, alpha male, Jack the Lad, uh, but still had carried out his royal duties, done some remarkable things too, the Invictus Games, for example, uh, perhaps his work on mental health, other areas, and that he was a remarkable young man, but I felt that he was being dragged down by Meghan Markle, dragged away uh, from his royal duties. And I say duties because he was born second in line to the throne. Yeah, sure, I know he's now sixth, but he was born into a position of great privilege, of significant wealth, uh, of, you know, in many ways, a wonderful lifestyle, but with a lot of duties that went with it. And I said that I felt this was going wrong, uh, that Meghan was dragging him away from the royal family, and that for the second time in less than 100 years, an American divorcee uh, was in danger of doing great damage to our monarchy. Boy, I tell you what, if you criticise the royal family, it happens. I mean, the front page of a son, Farage rips into Harry. The express fury over Farage's scathing rant at the royal family. And we go on. The mirror, the whole front page, storm over Farage's vile attack on the royal family. Oh, the Evening Standard, they didn't want to miss out either, did they? Ranting Farage. Harry's lost it with Meghan. Well, I didn't say the things I said because I wanted to be gratuitously offensive. I said what I said because I genuinely thought uh, that she was taking him away from, from the close bond that he has with his family and because of that, the responsibilities and duties that he has as a royal. I thought... Everything about yesterday's statement was wrong. Even the language. You know, this new progressive relationship we're going to have with the monarchy. The fact that the Queen and Prince Charles had not directly been consulted. I think that is frankly appalling. And there are many that say, and I would agree with them, that they appear to want to have their cake and eat it. Keep the good bits. Let's stay HRH. Let's keep Frogmore, which has just been done up at the cost of two and a quarter million pounds. Let's pop over to Britain when we fancy it for holiday. But actually, we're going to be on the West Coast. Uh, we're going to be on Vancouver Island. We'll be in Los Angeles. Oh, and they're going to become financially independent. You bet your life they are. Oh, I'll tell you what they're going to do. They'll form a foundation rather like the Clinton Foundation. In America, you can set up foundations. Uh, the rules for people giving money to foundations are very different to here. In fact, there are quite good tax incentives for th philanthropic giving. Um, they'll have a foundation, and they will go to uh, smart dinners with the Hollywood set, raise huge amounts of money. Uh, the foundation, of course, will be for helping the oppressed, uh, those with mental problems, etc. But, of course, if you've got a foundation like that, uh, you can live quite comfortably in many ways off it. All, of course, in the pursuit of your work, you do understand. Oh, and Harry can go on Oprah Winfrey, and he can appear on shows. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine what the appearance fees would be for Harry on American television. Can you even contemplate what he and Meghan would get for after dinner speaking? I mean, they can earn on the West Coast, particularly given her background as an actress and him a royal, they can earn, I'm going to say, tens of millions a year. And I genuinely think they can. Now, that's fine. I don't mind them earning tens of millions a year. But I don't think... I don't think they can do that and stay HRH and say they're going to stay loyal to the Queen, the Commonwealth and the various patronages that they have of charity organisations in this country. They can't do both. And I think, frankly, 
I think Harry has let the side down. This is not because of Meghan Markle. She may have influenced him, but it's Harry in the end that's made these... Yeah, I know, as a young man, he had the traumatic and very public death of his mother. And I mean, how on earth they made him walk behind that coffin through the streets of London. I will simply never, ever know how a young boy managed to do that. It was harrowing even watching it at the time. I couldn't bear it. But lots of people in life go through all sorts of awful tragedies and difficulties. They just have to get on with it ultimately and move on. And I do, folks, I mean it. I think Harry's let the side down. Now, you may think I'm harsh. If you do think I'm harsh, if you think I'm wrong, and he should be able to drop his royal duties, he should be able to live uh, this transatlantic life, then tell me why I'm wrong on 0345 6060 Or maybe you agree with me. He was born a prince. He was born with privileges, but also with duties and responsibilities. And he has let the side down text to 84850. And tell me, do you think they should apologise to the Queen for embroiling her in this massive public row? The worst row in many ways since the abdication of Edward VIII all the way back in 1936, and they did it without telling the Queen. Should they apologise? I think they certainly should. Please tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And, of course, you can watch us on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Sheila is calling from Church Langley in Essex. Sheila, oh, yes. good evening. Um, what a sad day, uh, Nigel. Mm. What a sad day for the country, for the Queen. Yes. You know, he's let the side down, mm. you know. And, I mm. mean, look at the Queen's age. Look at Prince Philip, possibly possibly on near his last. And to think, they've been off on that jolly out there, and it was a jolly, and, you know, you had the Royal Protection Officers out there guarding them, at what expense, and we're already short of police. He has, he has not even thought it through, uh, Nigel, but, you know, if they want to go, go, but don't expect the goodies to go with it. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's the point, Sheila, isn't it? Um, you know, when Edward VIII abdicated. They did give him an honorary title, the Duke of Windsor, uh, but basically, uh, you know, he was off in exile, and he really, I think he came back to the country two, only two or three times, and that was, right. you know, the death of his mother, I think, and, 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 and things yeah. like that. Um, yeah, you can't have your cake and eat it, Sheila. But, Sheila you know, Nigel, the Queen is revered around the world, the Commonwealth, everything. Yes. You know, and he was, there weren't youngsters getting married. She was a lady, you know, who had experienced life before she met him. She knew what she was going into. She wanted the world stage, and she got it. Well, I'll tell and look you, at the wonderful wedding with the millions spent on it, Nick, uh, Nigel. Yeah, I mean, the wedding, actually, I mean, I, you know, I, I was there the day before in Windsor, look, and, and it was amazing, and I, and I think it did, um, you know, highlight, the, highlight Windsor and royalty and yeah. ceremony. Um, I mean, the Americans were obsessed with it. You know, yes. all the big American TVs, and it was this amazing, glamorous thing. But, it's just so sad, But, Nigel, Sheila, so it's... Very sad. It was a sad news to wake up to this mm. morning. Is history repeating itself, but Sheila? But like you said, we knew all wasn't well, but mm, I things did. haven't been well before. And everyone has crisis in life. This young man had counselling if he wanted it. He had support from every angle regarding his mum, and how many mm. people lost their mum, Nigel? Oh, I, I, lots of people go through all sorts of awful tragedies. Sheila, is this, is this 1936 all over again? I, I, as soon as, as that wedding, as I finished watching it, I thought, there it goes again, uh, Edward and Mrs Simpson. I'm sorry to say it, but mm. that was it all over again. Well, I don't disagree with you. Sheila, thank you. Sheila, they're very, very disappointed. Andrew in Croydon says, Nigel, leave Harry and Meghan alone. They are honouring their vows, and I wish them all the best. Well, they may be honouring their vows to each other in their wedding, but what about... A man that is born second in line to the throne and has responsibilities, not just to this country, but indeed also to a Commonwealth within which there are 2.4 billion people. Sorry, Andrew, I just don't agree with you. No, given that William now has children, Harry is relegated to being a minor royal. His importance is diminished. Well, look, OK, I get that on Twitter. Um, apparently they were upset that they weren't including it in the photograph that was published last week of the of the the, the, the the Queen and the three next successors. I just don't believe that. I mean, that is the game, isn't it? You're born a prince, and you may go down the pecking order. I don't... To me, that's a confected row. Steve is a new caller to the show from Northampton. Good evening, Steve. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, am I right? Has he let the side down? No, you're wrong. You're okay. Absolutely wrong. All right, go Harry, on, then. Harry is a husband he's a father he's got a family and he has to do what's right for him 
He has to do what's right for his wife. And he has to do what's right for his family. Now, he is not second in line to the throne. He is, would you say, sixth in line sixth, to the throne? Sixth, yeah, that's right. So, how important is Andrew and Margaret? How, how you know, now that they're at the age they are, you know, the public don't really care. So he will eventually go into the abyss, right? I think, so, you, meant, I th- I think you meant Anne, not Margaret, but anyway. Oh, sorry, um, Anne, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but, 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 Steve, they are still... Uh, born into the royal household, they are born with great privilege, and I put it to you, they're also born with duties. Yes, but but the duties, when you become a parent, when you become a family unit of your own, mm-hmm. your duties are to the people who are in your house, or in your four walls, and your duties are to protect them, no matter what. And if that means take, stepping down, taking some time out, whether it, you know, permanently at the moment, however it will be, you know, I, Steve, I think he's made the decision Steve, for Steve, I, I understand. Think, yeah. I understand. I've read one message out already talking about their vows to each other. You're making the point about family. But I do think, you know, he's born with a responsibility to the country. And I do think, Steve, I mean, Steve, they can't be half in, half out, can they? I mean, Steve, listen to this point of view. Robert on Twitter says to me, as long as the couple really leave and are not half in and half out like Mrs May's Brexit deal. I mean, they can't have it both ways, Steve, can they? No, well, they've said they want to be to be financially independent, and let's face it, when you're out of the Premier League, you are not financially independent, you are given parachute payments. So, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if that's their ultimate aim, to be financially independent, and like you say, they can make a killing... Oh, they can do. If, if they ultimately get to that sort of end, then f- fair play. Should they give up the title of HRH? I mean, I, I don't have an opinion on that. I, I, I think that if you're born as a royal, regardless whether you've got a gruelling 365-day-a-year schedule as a royal... Um, oh, hang yeah, on, hang you, on, you should, Steve. You should retain Steve, that. they've just had a six-week holiday on Vancouver Island. Six weeks. The press didn't. Oh, the press didn't follow them. The press didn't didn't chase them down. I mean, they've had no. six weeks. It's not bad, is it? No, and Vancouver Island is a lovely place. Do you fancy six weeks in Vancouver Island, Steve? Oh uh, well, I've, I've had a week in well, two weeks in Vancouver and all that area, and I love well, it there. You're obviously well. a man of great privilege, too. Steve, thanks for the call. OK, some of you saying he's got a responsibility to his marriage vows to his family. I understand that, but surely this man is born into different circumstances. Folks, I believe he's let the side down. You're listening to The Nigel Farrow Show here on LBC at 6.15. Time for the news headlines with Holly Jones. Downing Street says it's looking into very concerning reports suggesting the Ukrainian passenger plane which crashed in Iran may have been shot down by a missile. Counter-terrorism police Police are investigating after a prison officer in Cambridgeshire was attacked by two inmates, with five others taken to hospital. It's understood the Queen has directed all four royal households to find workable solutions for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex within days, not weeks. LBC weather heavy rain for southern parts of England and Wales this evening, easing overnight. Clear spells across Scotland and northern England with a few showers, a low of minus two. LBC Travel Line Dave Goff. The Rockies on the M3 northbound. It's down to one lane because of an accident before junction 2 for the M25. On the M25, anti clockwise, the Rockies because of a breakdown after junction 19 for Watford. Two lanes are closed there. Anti clockwise on the M25, it's also very slow because the car's broken down after junction 6 for Godston. There are delays in Walthamstow. Chingford Road stays closed in both directions because of a police investigation between the Crooked Billet Interchange and the Morrison's turnoff. It's very slow in Halsden. Church Road southbound stays shut between Neasden Lane and Craven Park Road because of an accident. And there are long delays in New Malden on the A3 south. Band. The exit slip road at Shannon Corner stays blocked. That's because of an accident. Back for its third year. And the winner is... The Global Awards 2020. LBC and its sister stations are joining together to bring you an unforgettable awards night. Show your appreciation for LBC's Mr Steve Allen. The Global Awards 2020 with Very.co.uk. Rewarding the very best from the world of music, news and entertainment. But who will win this time? Vote now. Download the Global Player app or have your say at lbc.co.uk. The Global Awards 2020. With very.co.uk. Get more out of every day. LBC.
It might just be reading more, or something big, like doing a marathon. And someone out there is plucking up the courage to finally sort out the top left kitchen drawer. If you've resolved to get the best start to the new year, here's a little something from Audi. At the Audi January event, you can save between 500 and 3,000 pounds on models right across the range. Visit your local Audi center from the 3rd to the 12th of January. Oh, and good luck with those drawers. Audi, Vorsprung durch Technik. 18s and over, subject to status, T's and C's and exclusions apply. UK retail customers, participating retailers only. Order between 3rd and 12th of January and register by 31st of March 2020. Excludes RS models. Visit audi.co.uk. LBC. At Ring, we've reinvented the doorbell. So no matter where you are or what time of day, you can watch over your home and the things you care about. Ring Video Doorbell streams HD video and two-way talk straight to your phone so you can speak to whoever's at your door from anywhere. Delivery. Oh, great. Could you leave it with my neighbour, please? Sure, no problem. And it's so simple, you can install it yourself in minutes. See, hear and speak to whoever's at your door from wherever you are with Ring Video Doorbell. Available at ring.com and selected retailers. Here you are, it's January again. Nuh uh, this is 2020, the year of the boss. The year you leave your same old job Bye. and boss the business of your hashtag dreams. But and with a three business plan, you get exclusive benefits from FreshBooks, Moo, WeWork, and Wix. Oh, um. Plus, you can get unlimited data and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Oh. So you can ride the wave of new biz like an absolute pro. Get a plan fit for a boss because three means business, just like you. Compatible device required. See 3.co.uk slash 5G. Hello? Sarah, Winston Wolf. I understand a tenant was complaining about a problem at one of your properties. So we paid them a visit and uh, you won't be hearing from them again. What? Direct line dealt with the problem, Sarah. You bought landlord emergency with your policy, and they sent somewhere around in four hours. Perfect. Electrician, plumber, glazier, locksmith emergency response within four hours. Can your landlord insurance do that? Search direct line, landlord emergency. Optional add-on excludes Scottish Highlands and Islands. Extreme weather conditions may extend response time. Residential properties only. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. You know what it's like when you can't find your debit card. Panic. That's what it's like. Until you realise, as a Halifax Visa debit card holder, that you can freeze your card on the spot. Control your Halifax Visa debit card with the Halifax mobile app. Easy as. You can only freeze certain transaction types. Terms and conditions apply. This is LBC, the Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. And breaking news on this royal story, it is that the Queen has directed all four royal households to find workable solutions for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex within days, not weeks, a Buckingham Palace source has said. And remarkable last night, the Buckingham Palace were briefing how disappointed they were. They didn't even say that after the Prince Andrew scandal. Gives you some idea of, uh, was it Queen Victoria? We are not amused. I think they really were not amused at all last night in Buckingham Palace. And they're not going to find a workable solution because what they've put on the table, I don't think is possible. Andy in Portsmouth says to me, they can't pick and choose how much of a role they want to be. It's either 100% in or they're out with titles gone. They don't need money but they're going to make millions in Hollywood. Andy, they most certainly are. Jim says we're witnessing the end of the royals. After the Queen, there is nothing left. Well, I'm not so sure about that. If the alternative is some clapped-out politician that becomes a president, and sort of we get Neil Kinnock as head of state, you know, rather than the, rather than the Queen, I, I think I'd rather stick with the royal family. Rob says, to use a modern metaphor, Harry thinks he's too cool for school. And Anonymous says... Maybe we should look at Harry as a new and progressive person. Oh, how lovely. The royal family are a stale old institution, but pe and people are coming bored with it. Progressive. Oh, it's lovely. I th If progressive means we keep the titles, we keep the houses, we keep the money, but do no work, well, we can all be progressive, I suppose, can't we? Now, another piece of news that's broken within the last hour. At any point in the last three and a half years, a major important vote on the European Union, especially the third reading of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill before it goes to the House of Lords and as it nears ratification through the UK Parliament would have been an epic story, a nail-biter. 
everybody would have been trying to predict and read. Would it pass? Would it fail? What would the margins be? Order! John Burko would have been there, centre stage. And now, because there's a big Commons majority, no more John Burko at all. Good, in my view. But no more political drama, because the withdrawal bill has cleared that third reading in the House of Commons with a massive, massive majority of 99. So it gives you an idea that we're now in a very different place. And we've been very heavily focused on the House of Commons for the last three and a half years. We are not going to be that focused on the House of Commons for many, many years to come because there is a big working majority. The game has changed. So on Monday, the House of Lords will start to debate this. They'll vote on this. They might put down some minor amendments. They might not. But you can basically say that we're virtually there. It's pretty much gone through. It then goes to the European Parliament, where <clears throat> on the 29th of this month, the European Parliament in session in Brussels will debate this. They will vote on it. Don't yet know whether it'll be the evening of the 29th or the morning of the 30th. That's to be confirmed. Believe it or believe it not, the EU Parliament could veto the whole agreement. They do have the power under Article 50, under the treaties, to do that. But they are most unlikely to do so, because pretty much in the European Parliament, they'll do what their own political leaders back at home, particularly in France and Germany and Italy, tell them to. So I think we are pretty much there. And, you know, 11pm on the 31st of January 2020, it is going to be a very big moment in this nation's history. I hope after it we can all move on. Back to the royal family. Yeah, you know, I'm not happy with the role that Meghan Markle has played, but uh, there's some sympathy here. I mean, Mark on Facebook says, The Queen disrespected Harry and Meghan during the Queen's speech. Last Christmas, there was no photograph on the desk of the couple. Oh, come on, Mark, for goodness sake. You know, she, she, it's, it's not her job to bow down to Meghan and Harry. She can put photographs of whatever grandchildren or children she wants to put on her desk. I think he's let the side down. That's my view. Matthew goes even further. He says, get rid of the lot of them. Time they took care of their own life. When we became, we became a modern republic. Matthew, I promise you, that is a very, very small minority view. Whatever crisis we're going through here with Harry and Meghan and with Andrew, uh, and, and some have reservations about Charles, but whatever difficulties we're going through, I do not think this country is anywhere near, by a mile, wanting to be a republic with President Kinnock in charge. Let's go to Matthew, who's calling from Madrid in Spain. Matthew, good evening to you. Good evening, Nigel. Right, well, um, I think that Harry is faced with a really difficult decision because Meghan's had enough, you know, she's got itchy feet. Um, after uh, uh, Ma Matthew, Ma is, Matthew, after yeah. a very short period of time, well, what can I say? I mean, I, I actually share a birthday with Meghan Markle. So we're Leos. Uh, we're very impulsive. We like to be in the centre of attention. Don't, ju don't uh, just hang up, Matthew. Be... Stay with us, Matthew. Don't quit. Don't quit the call. Stay with me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. And, uh, right. Um, and uh, that's the point, isn't it? We get bored of things quickly and we want to move on to the next thing, you know. Um, a little bit childish in that respect. And that was my fear that uh, when, when Harry did ma marry uh, Meghan, that she may have joined the stardom, you know, as you say in the US, the, the royals are elevated to star status. Um, but she, she's done the Duchess role now, and she, she's ready for something new. Poor Harry is now faced with a decision. Divorce, so he can stay with the, with the firm, or uh, him leaving, leaving the family and, and uh, pursuing other things probably in, in the U.S., and maybe even he'll star in a few roles himself. We don't know. But that's the decision he's made. It may be because he wants to sort of, you know, take a little bit of distance from the royal family, also because of all the scandals surrounding his uncle. These are all factors as well. But, you know, in terms of, um, you know, watching what's going on, you don't, you don't need to, to watch Netflix uh, to see The Crown. You just tune into the news. It's much more exciting. Well, I know. I think yesterday was a whole new episode of The Crown, actually. Um, and, of course, Matthew, you're talking <laughs> from a country that brought the, that brought the monarchy back um, in 1975, and the reintroduction of the monarchy seemed to be a very good thing in Spain. 
Well, ever the historian, no, it's all, uh, I think you're a bit more clued up on, on the Spanish Well, it's true. No, it's I true. Am. I mean, actually, <laughs> after, you know, you know post-Franco, post-dictatorship, you know, Spain became a modern, democratic country, uh, you know, a, a, a constitutional monarchy, uh, and I think it's actually been quite a great success in Spain. And I know there are you know, countries around the world that act as republics, but it's certainly worked there. Matthew, thank you for your call. And Matthew says she's a Leo. And that's part of the problem. Sorry, I don't buy that, but it was interesting. Ryan is a new caller to LBC, and he's from Glasgow. Good evening. Hi, Leon Nigel. Uh, the first thing I want to say is I really do sympathise with Harry, and I sympathise the situation that they're going through. But at the same time, sympathy aside, I think he's really let the side down. Mm. I think he's let down the royal family. Mm-hmm. I think he's let down the public as well. And I'm concerned, as a lover of the royal family, I'm concerned that the reputation of the royal family is going to be damaged by this. Are people going to turn around and think, well, if they can grow up for 30 years under the care of, the, you know, the, the taxpayer, and then suddenly they swan off quite happy with their degrees um, and their private education? And I just I, I just feel let down, generally. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Ryan, I, I have to say, that's my feeling. I think people have a yeah. right to feel let down. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's had ups, he's, he's, he's had some big downs in his life, he's been a brave lad, yeah. um, he's yeah. been out in Afghanistan and done all sorts of things that I haven't done, and maybe you haven't done either, Ryan. Of course um, not, yeah. You know, and, and I admire him for that, and I think yes. things like he's done with the Invictus Games, fantastic, amazing, yeah. I mean, he's made that work, and and, yeah. and and all this, them complaining about the press and now announcing they're off the Royal Rota with press... Actually, yeah. for most of his life, Harry's had a very good press, in my view. And, and, and I think that these, you know, the royals, that's their, that's their job. They have to do that. Just like it's you their, have to go to work. Do you know what, Ryan? And I have to go to work. It's a job for them. And they get a six weeks annual leave. That's do, more than I get. Do you know what, Ryan? <laughs> it's not their job. It's their duty. They're born to it. Exactly. They're born to it. They've got yeah. no choice. Ryan, thank you. That's my view, too. Mark says, I used to like you, Nigel. Now you're sounding like Corbyn. What? Let them be. Harry hasn't let anyone down. He fought for our country. Well, I accept that last point, Mark. And I made reference to it a few moments ago. Mark, I'm not sounding like Corbyn. The opposite. I'm not arguing to get rid of the royal family. I'm arguing that the firm, as they're known, uh, you know, who I do believe in, and I think are a great symbol of this country around the world, this bloke has just run away. He's given up the ghost. A bit like Edward VIII did. He's going off effectively resigning to live in America to make loads of money. All I can say is I hope he's going to be happy because whenever I saw those photographs or those films of the Duke of Windsor living in the Bois de Boulogne with Wallace Simpson, he didn't look very happy to me. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.30 and time for the news with Holly Jones. Officials in the US say it's highly likely a passenger plane which crashed, killing everyone on board, was shot down by an Iranian missile. Three British people were among those who died when the aircraft heading to Kiev came down shortly after takeoff in Tehran. Boris Johnson is calling for an urgent investigation. Five prison officers in Cambridgeshire have been taken to hospital after a serious assault by two inmates with counter-terror police investigating. HMP Whitemore says it was quickly resolved by the staff. It's understood the Queen, Prince Charles and Prince William have ordered their teams to find a workable solution over the future role of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex within the royal family. It follows the couple's announcement they would be stepping back as senior royals. LBC weather, heavy rain for southern parts of England and Wales this evening, easing overnight, clear spells across Scotland and Northern Ireland with a few showers, a low of minus two. Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Weekday mornings from seven. Rocking the royal family to its core. Harry and Meghan decide they're going to quit the firm. The royal family, quotes, deeply disappointed. Sarah in Enfield. I think Meghan is to blame here. I want to bring Anna and Kilburn in. Of course it's not Meghan's fault. Uh, the only person who talks about the race and the diversity so much is Meghan herself. Because she's she not win. under attack. There is insidious racism in this country. And shout out to Meghan because she wouldn't tolerate it. Nick Ferrari at breakfast. With zero. Get your business digital ready with zero accounting software. LBC. Many dentists across the UK will refer their more challenging dental implant patients to Darwood and Tanner. Here's Andrew Darwood. We are really proud to have patients come to see us from all over the world. Our reputation is built on delivering outstanding dental implant solutions for people with very challenging problems. To find out more about the transformational effect of Darwood and Tanner dental implants, go to darwoodandtanner.co.uk. Darwood and Tanner, obsessive about dental implants. 
credit limit of up to £1,500. What do you have to do to get it? Simple. Get online and check if you're eligible for an Ocean credit card in minutes without affecting your credit score. For your Ocean credit card, visit ocean.co.uk now and get all that from Ocean. Intelligent Lending Limited is a credit broker. Capital One, the exclusive lender. Representative 39.9% APR variable. Borrow and spend responsibly. The real reason Sleeping Beauty fell asleep was because it was taking so long for the palace to sell. And the handsome prince needed the proceeds to buy their new home with no time to dwell. I know who can help. Property Rescue. I'll contact them straight away. So he spoke to their friendly team who took care of every detail. They bought the palace direct with no legal fees to pay. Fast forward to living happily ever after. Visit propertyrescue.co.uk. Property Rescue. Fast forward to sold. How can it be fair that millions of people in the world are denied access to clean water? At WaterAid, we need your help to create an equal world. Whether you're from Morden or Madagascar, everyone, everywhere should have access to clean water because clean water changes lives. You can help WaterAid change the picture. To find out how, search WaterAid Radio now. The Vodafone Big Winter Sale is now on. Now you can get average speeds of 63 megabits per second of super fast fibre broadband for only £20 a month for selected pay monthly customers. Just one of the amazing offers in the Vodafone Big Winter Sale. Go online or in store today. The future is exciting. Ready? Vodafone. Prices may change. 18 month term subject to credit acceptance and availability. Ends 30th of January. 61% of Superfast 2 customers receive sync speed above 63 megabits per second. Visit vodafone.co.uk slash broadband. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Harry has let the side down. That is my view. I'm canvassing your opinion. Before I get back to that, yesterday we saw an aeroplane that had taken off from Tehran Airport with 176 people on board, crash and crash very, very quickly, everybody being killed. It was apparently in a ball of flames before it hit the ground. The Iranian authorities have not as yet released the black box. I didn't speculate about it last night on the programme. It seemed just to be a bit too early to me to do that. And I hate being dragged into things that turn out to be it was an accident and there's no conspiracy. But today... Uh, It's interesting that uh, a couple of U.S. officials have said that they think it's highly likely that an Iranian anti-aircraft missile downed the Ukrainian jetliner. Remember, just the night before, we had Iran launching ballistic missile attacks on Iraqi bases where uh, predominantly U.S. military bases, although some British soldiers were there Two. Uh, So we still don't absolutely know, uh, but Donald Trump giving a press interview a couple of hours ago said this. The plane that went down from Iran, what do you think happened to that plane? Well, I have my suspicions. It was very, I I don't want to say that because other people have those suspicions also. Uh, It's a tragic thing when I see that. It's a tragic thing. but somebody could have made a mistake on the other side. Could have, could have made a mistake. It was flying. It was, it was flying in, uh, not our system. No, it has nothing to do with us. Uh, it was flying in a pretty rough neighborhood, and somebody could have made <laughs> a mistake. Uh, some people say it was mechanical. I personally don't think that's uh, even a question. Personally. Tehran's a rough neighbourhood, says the president, but he has his suspicions too. So we don't know. And at some point, this black box. I think is going to be released, at least I hope it's going to be released, and we'll find out whether uh, we hear, you know, the noise of a missile hitting. The fact that the, the fact that the aeroplane was, according to witness accounts, a ball of flame before it hit the ground does begin to lead one to this conclusion. I'm not saying what I think. I don't know, but it begins to look like that. Iran, the Iran story, not completely going away. Back to the royal family. Back to Harry and Meghan, who I criticised so heavily last August, and I didn't regret doing it at the time, and I certainly don't regret doing it now. I think they've let the side down, let everyone down, frankly. I get this anonymously. You'd rather have the royals. I think the UK should be asked in a referendum whether they want the royals. Let's hear from the people. Do you know what? There is no public demand at all for a referendum on this question, in my opinion. 
totally disgusting of Harry to ignore the Queen regarding the announcement. Paul, on Twitter, you're the first person to raise that. This, to me, is a really important point. I mean, it's disrespectful beyond belief that Buckingham Palace did not realise that extraordinary press release was going out. And what was it, about six... About 6.45 last night, wasn't it? I was on air. About 6.45 last night, we got that uh, that press statement. Also, it was very interesting, wasn't it? wasn't just a press statement, but live time, a new website went up. Sussexroyal.com. All updated. So they've been planning this. They've been working on this for a long time. Just hadn't had the courtesy to tell the Queen. And I really do think... That is very, very bad. Nigel, it's sad. They could have been the dream team. But the couple seem to be behaving like footballers' wives. American values. New money. Bling. Not royal, says Ian. Prince Harry can never change who he is uh, or what he was born in his DNA, whatever he says. He must realise this. And patenting the name Sussex Royal is disingenuous, to say the least. Samantha from West London this is the point I'm making. You can't set up a new website saying sussexroyal.com. I mean, they'll be selling merchandise on there before you know it, if they're going to be self-financing. You can't have this both ways. I really do think that's right. I really do think that's right. <laughs> I get on YouTube, the Queen should have a photograph of you on the desk, Nigel. Thank you. I don't think that's going to happen in a hurry. Um, although she is rumoured to be a Brexiteer, but hey. Sheila is a new caller to LBC. She lives in Devon. Good evening to you. Hello, Nigel. Uh, first of all, could I just say thank you for the celebration. You're going to give me and my family on the 31st of January. We should all celebrate. It's a big mm. moment. It really is. Yeah. It really, and when you, th- and when you think, Sheila, when you think, just five or ten years ago, virtually nobody in the House of Commons even wanted to talk about Brexit. This was something pushed by the people from the grassroots. That's what makes it so much sweeter to me. Hey, we'll come back to that in the next couple of weeks. Sheila, has he mm. let the side down? Uh, well, I, he's let, maybe one side thinks he's let them down, but I think the other side, I think uh, the public are fickle in a way. We, we all remember being delighted to see Harry in the um, uh, in the fairground ra- rides with his mother and we said, oh, ha- isn't this refreshing? Mm. How, how we all applauded with his uh, uncle's speech at his mother's funeral mm-hmm. and how we all thought, yes, uh, we hope these children don't have to have a a stuffy life, this old-fashioned kind of way of doing things. And I think we've forgotten that. And this is Diana's legacy. She wanted her sons to make their own way. And if you only get one life, which a lot of people believe, why shouldn't he have the life that he wants? It's six in line. So, well, you know. I tell you what, Sheila, I'm not going to wholly disagree with you. If, mm-hmm. if the life that he wants is not to have raw duties and responsibilities. If the life that he wants, they've made it clear, is not to speak to the media on the royal rotor and do the things the royal family have done when they perform engagements for decade after decade, then wouldn't it be more honest to give up the title, give up the house in Windsor, uh, and go to America and make money? I mean, wouldn't that... Because my my complaint here, Sheila, really... Yeah. I mean, my first complaint, I, mean, I do think he's actually born to this as a duty, but hey, you know, we can take different points of view yeah. on that. We, we, you and I can differ on that. But, but, but it does seem to me you can't have it both ways. Well, maybe, maybe they, like the rest of us, they want to try something out, see if it works out, before they burn all the bridges. Everybody would do that who needs to, you know, have an income, wouldn't they? I mean, some people rent out well, their houses while they go and work abroad. Sheila, the one thing for certain is if they go and live on the West Coast, they will not struggle for money. They will make tens <laughs> of millions every year. Yeah, well, w- well, it's a family thing, isn't it? Not struggling for money, let's face it. No, well, he's, wor- he's worth about £30 million, we believe, in, yeah. in inherited money. And I think she's done quite well for herself, too. Sheila, thank you very much indeed for your call. Going to move on to Adam, who's a new caller from Leon Solent. Good evening, Adam. Hello there, mate. How you doing? I'm doing well. So, what do you make of Harry's actions? Um, I think I disagree with a lot of what you say tonight, Nigel. All right. Which is, uh, which is a little bit unusual. Well, it's free, um, free open debate here on LBC. Adam, tell, <coughs> tell me where I've got it wrong. That's what we know. Yeah, um, well, when you say it's his duty, uh-huh. um, I feel like, first of all, he's a grown man and he's got a family, so he should be able to do what he wants. But he's born into it and he can't. he hasn't got a choice. So he doesn't have a normal life like I would have, you know, like going out causing mischief and 
going up the pub and, you know, having a game of snooker. Mm. He's limited. I feel he's limited to what he can do as opposed to it's a life of he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't. He certainly couldn't live a normal life. Well, he used to go up the pub, Adam. He used to go up the pub, didn't he, when he was younger? (laughs) Yeah, but we both know it's all over the press the next day and, you know, you you can't, you know what I'm saying. You can't go to the line on a Friday, can he? Have you inherited, Adam, can I just ask you, have you inherited 30 million and a nice big house in Windsor? Oh, I wish I did. Adam, you're not wrong there. I promise you to want to avoid <laughs> that. But look, he was born into something, and I, I think there is a there must be a sense of duty about that. And there are privileges that come with it. He's just had six weeks on Vancouver Island, Adam. Not bothered or hectored by a single member of the press. They behave pretty but well with them look, over this holiday. What class is duty, Nigel. I mean, he's done. He's gone to Afghanistan. Yes. I mean, twice. He's done more duty than me or you could ever do. He's given up. No, his he's done. He's he, he, he did his bit. Yeah. There's no question about that. And I think he's done. And I say, and he's done some good things, Adam. He's done some. Do what he wants. He's done some good things. He's 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 shone a light on some causes that otherwise we might not have mm. thought about. And he's done that very, very well. But Adam... Yeah, in a positive way as well. Yeah, no, no, he's done some great... I, I'm, you know, he's done some good things. I like... Mm. Look, I liked him when he was Jack the Lad. I liked him yeah. when he was, you know, at Vegas, stripped of the scandal. waist at passes and all the rest of it. I liked <laughs> it, but that's me. But the point is, the point is, he appears to, he appears to want to have his cake and eat it. He can't have this both ways, Adam, can he? Then what do you mean both ways? What, well, he wants to keep the title, to... keep the house, keep the privileges, but do none of the well, duties. Once you're a prince, surely you're a prince. Well, <sighs> well, I, I, you ha- can't I... start taking taking titles away from people because they don't want to do what you want to do. Well, I tell so you what, I, t- I tell you what, is he going to live in? A, is he going to live a Hollywood lifestyle and make tens of millions a year, or is he going to carry carry out public duties in Britain? He can't do both. No, exactly. I That's... think probably he certainly wants a break by what he said. Well, 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 and we wouldn't mind. Nice. We wouldn't mind him having a break. That'd be fine. But that really wasn't what that message said yesterday. Adam, thank you very much indeed for the call. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at six forty-five, and time for the news headlines with Holly Jones. U.S. officials say it's highly likely an Iranian anti-aircraft missile brought down a Ukrainian passenger plane, which killed everyone on board in Tehran. Counter-terror police are investigating after a prison officer in Cambridgeshire was attacked by two inmates, with five officers taken to hospital. It's understood the Queen has directed all four royal households to find workable solutions within days after Prince Harry and Meghan announced their plan to step back from public duties. LBC weather, heavy rain for southern parts of England and Wales this evening, easing overnight, clear spells across Scotland and northern England with a few showers, a low of minus two. LBC Travel, I'm Dave Goff. There are keys on the M3 northbound. There's a lane closed because of an accident before Junction 2 at the M25. On the M25 clockwise, it's also very slow. That's because the car's broken down between Junction 24 for Potters Bar and Junction 25 for Enfield. It's very slow on the A1M northbound. The exit slip road at Junction 2 for Wellham Green is closed because the car's overturned. There are long delays in Walthamstow. Chingford Road is closed in both directions because of a police investigation at the Crooked Billet Interchange. There are keys through the Blackwall Tunnel northbound. The exit slip road at the A13 East India Dock Road is closed because of motorbikes on fire. And there are long delays in New Malden on the A3 South. And that's because of an accident at Shannon Corner. Coming up at 10 on LBC, Ian Dale. At 8, Liberal Democrat MP Leila Moran will join me to talk about Liberal Democrat leadership and why she announced that she's a pansexual. Plus, we'll be talking Labour leadership at 9. Ian Dale on LBC. At Argos, our sale is on and so much more. Go online to shop our range of amazing deals, including tech, toys and home. Plus, with up to half price on selected homewares and furniture, there is no better time to style up your home. Visit our website to shop our full range of deals. With Argos, you're good to go. Selected lines, condition supply, subject to availability. Hello, Sonny speaking. Hi, Sonny. It's Alex. Is Steve free? Steve, I have Alex on the line. Put him through. Hi, Alex. Hello? <sighs> Hello? Fed up of a difficult-to-use phone system? Hi Hi is an intuitive touchscreen business phone with removable tablet, centralised contacts and instant video to anyone. Stop saying... Hello? And start saying... Hi. Visit hihi.co.uk for more information. Fancy watching a film? Could do. What's on? This looks good. Spiders on a train. What's it about? 
um, spiders knocking about on a train. Sometimes the name says it all, like the Big Tasty from McDonald's with succulent beef, cheese, sliced tomato, lettuce, onions and lashings of our Big Tasty sauce. Available with or without bacon. Served after 11am until the 28th of January. Participating restaurants only, subject to availability. Ah, Socrates, solve the hearing aid paradox yet? No, Plato, I still don't understand how a sale of tiny hearing aids can also be massive. It's simple relativity. Oh, shut up, Albert. But it's true, Specsavers have tiny hearing aids with advanced Bluetooth technology. And now you can save a massive £400 on selected hearing aids. Like a mouse relative to an elephant, yeah? A mouse? The hearing aid sale at Specsavers. Tiny hearing aids, massive savings. Terms and conditions apply. Sale ends 31st of January. Ask in store for details. I never belong. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. <laughs> this new year, get the whole family singing with an extra £500 off list price across the Skoda range between the 16th and 30th of January. Also available when purchasing with our finance offers. Search Skoda New Year New Car for more details. Driven by something different. Skoda. Exclude Citigo EIV and all SE technology variants. Order by the 30th of January and register by the 31st of March 2020. Off not available with contract hire. UK retail customers 18 plus. Finance subject to status. Terms and conditions apply. Visit skoda.co.uk. At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. The Oak Furniture Land Weekend Spectacular means fantastic savings on solid hardwood furniture. Don't miss out. Online or in-store. Our Weekend Spectacular ends Sunday. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC. The Nigel Farage Show. There are some that suggest that any criticism of Meghan Markle is, of course, because we're sexist and we're racist and we're awful. And Roy on Facebook says, I'm surprised they haven't blamed Brexit for it, as they do everything else. But there are people out there saying it. One of them here is Neil, who has sent me this lovely, lovely tweet. He says, Harry and Meghan have not let the side down. We will be denied partially the presence of this much-loved couple due to the fascist out of touch, positively medieval tabloid press. They want blood, and they've decided it should be Megan's. Outrageous. It's just ludicrous and over the top to talk about the fascist press. I mean, just ridiculous some of this stuff. You know, they have whatever criticism is coming to the royal couple, they have brought upon themselves. Let's be in no doubt about that. Brian. Uh, there's so many conspiracy theories here. Brian from Wolverhampton says, the timing of the announcement was for the benefit of the American media. No, Brian, it wasn't. It was 10 a.m. in L.A. and 1 p.m. in New York. I mean, it, 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 there's so many theories bouncing around on this. Uh, we get... Now, Simon says, interestingly, aren't Harry and Meghan answerable to the crown, the monarch first? Well, that's a good question. But in the end, in the end, we're answerable to ourselves in life. But I do think, I do think given that, that she, by marrying him, got global fame, you know, getting married there in Windsor, getting some of the perks, and, but yet sure duties, sure media intrusion at times, but I do think, I do, whether they're answerable to the monarch or not, I don't know, but I do think it was pretty blooming rude not to tell the Queen what they were doing and when they were doing it. I really, really do think that matters. Let's go to Matthew in Heathrow, who's a regular caller to the show. Good evening, Matthew. Yeah, evening, Nigel. Uh, well, like on Brexit, I can't agree with you on Prince Harry. I mean, uh, <laughs> he, he's got to be free to choose if he wants to be a part-time role, and then he should be able to do it. I mean, you've got to understand, he's got a young family, and uh, his wife's from America, so if they want to do six months there, six months there, we've got to let them do it. But they're going to go out, Matthew, and earn their own money, and 
Every time any member of the royal family has gone out to earn their own money, uh, you know, one thinks of Sophie of Wessex, or one thinks of Edward with the theatre company. Uh, as soon as that happens, as soon as they go into the commercial world, somehow it makes the royal family look a little bit grubby. They just can't have this. I mean, Matthew, I, I, I wasn't joking a moment ago when I said that RoyalSussex.com, before you know it, will be selling merchandise. I just don't think you can do both, can you? Well, uh, as you said, the royal family is a, a business, and if uh, Harry wants to split off and start his own Fine. business, Fine. let do that. I, I mean, I, I was actually fortunate enough, as you mentioned, uh, Prince uh, Edward, I was actually fortunate enough through one of the ch- his charities to actually have a private dinner with him in his home. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you've you got to understand the sacrifices, you know, they do do. Mm. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, to, no, you know, well, keep... well, well, Matthew, if he really is going to quit, then quit properly and go. He's a free person. He's got to be able to choose. He wants to enjoy life. And it but is, should he be I able mean, to bring... Like a prison sentence should he, in, should, in the royal no, family. No, he can so. leave... The, if, if, he views the royal, if he views being a royal as a prison, he can leave it. He can leave it, leave behind his responsibilities, but leave behind the privileges too. But I think there is, I mean, there's positives and there's negatives. So, you know, trying to do it just part-time could be the solution. Um, you know, I mean, I think most of the country do does like Prince Harry. And, um, yes, yeah, if he well, stays... Well, I, 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 I think the country, yeah. the country did like Prince Harry when he was a proper bloke and Jack the Lad, and they rather like that. Now, I mean, he appears, I mean, he, He's appeared in tears a couple of times. I mean, it appears that he's married this woman and changed completely. I think he's. Pop- I, I think he's lost his popularity with it too, Matthew. That's my view. But I think things do change once you get married. I mean, you've got a young family, and you know we've got to give him a chance. I mean, he's got to find his feet and you know where he wants to be, what he wants to do, and it could be. All right, Matthew. You know, in Matthew, run, you're, 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 you're offering lots of human sympathy for him. That's fine. Uh, just lastly, very quickly, should he t- should he have told the Queen what he was going to do? Well, yeah, but I'm sure that the, the, I mean... No, come the, on, answer me. The, the, the Queen is... I mean, I think... No, it's come on, stop mucking about, uh, Matthew. Advisors. You're an LBC regular, don't muck about, yes or yeah. no. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she, he has been talking with the right channels through the Queen. Well, the well Queen, why are Buckingham Palace so upset? Well, I think because, I mean, really, it, it, I mean, it is Buckingham Palace it is trying to Matthew, control Matthew, normally the you come on LBC and make good arguments. This conversation has not ended well, but we'll talk again very soon. Emma is a new caller to the show from Bromley. Good evening, Emma. Hi, Nigel. Good um, I'm 100% with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, a saying in um, land law. You cannot have the benefit without the burden. Mm. And they want to have, as you say, their cake and eat it. Yep. I also worry because of how Megan is that she wants to set up a rival court effectively in Canada. And then we're going to be on War yeah. of the Roses territory. Well, it Not may be. It York may, it, versus Lancaster, it, it, but it'll be Sussex versus Cambridge. And they just can't have it. They've got to have their titles removed. As you say, they're either going to be in. Or if they're out, they have to... Yeah, have I think I, I think that's right. And I, by the way, it won't be... It, it'll be Los Angeles, won't it? It'll be La La Land, Emma. That's where they'll be. Yeah. Do you know yeah, why? She has Do you know why? Because that. that's where the money is. <laughs> yeah. And you're quite right. I mean, it's not so much Abba's dancing queen as um, Megan's the merchant queen. And yeah. you are. You're going to have hoodies and... Yeah. Oh, and yes. And I, and I promise and you... Them. Harry's going on with Opera Winfrey and they'll be speaking at grand dinners and they'll be on the red carpet at the Oscars. You can see it all. Doesn't do a lot for the royal family, Emma, does it? It's, it, it, I don't mind them doing that as long as they don't have their titles. Fine. No, I'm with you. I think it's one or the other. I couldn't agree more. Emma, I thank you. Colin is a new caller to LBC as well and he calls from Morecambe. Colin, hello. Hi there. How are you doing? Oh, doing all right. So, I think he's let the side down, Colin. What say you? Um, I agree completely. I think, unfortunately, I, I love the royal family. I think they're great, but I think the fact that you can't stand and say you're financially independent, when you live in a house we paid for, mm. uh, and also all the other things that come with it. I, I mean, I, I slightly disagree with Matthew, his previous caller, when yep. he referred to... Megan coming from a different cast, you know, you're opening yourself up for a lot of problems there. What do you mean? Uh, I 
do think the press are quite racist towards her. Do you really? Yeah, I do. I think, um, I, Colin, I think that when she arrived on the scene, she got the best press anyone's ever had. I do think they've done brilliantly out of it. And I think if they want to go for the L.A. lifestyle... Mm-hmm. then that's the way, but you can't have both. Yeah, it's funny, it's, it's funny actually, Colin. Colin yeah. It's funny actually, and Colin, because they, they've they criticised the UK press for the attitude towards them. Go to Hollywood, oh. go to Los Angeles, they'll get even more intrusion, won't they? Right, I'm going to get a lot of stick for this. Yep. Diana was the same. You know, she loved the press when it well, suited her. When it suited her. I think her. Harry's the same. Yeah, I, Colin, you're going to get... A lot of a lot of callers will hear that and be quite enraged and upset that you said it, but I do understand the point. Colin, thank you for your call. Time for one last very quick call. Hayden, another new caller to LBC from Ipswich. Hayden, you've got 40 seconds to tell me whether I've got this right or wrong. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Good evening. I'd say Harry's definitely let the side down. He's giving everything up for a... Uh, Hollywood lifestyle with Megan. They'll move into a big mansion in Bel Air and live life of torture appearances and TV and movie cameos. Uh, yeah, but can he do that and maintain the titles and responsibilities and duties of being a royal in this country? Can he do both no, at the same not time? Not at all. He was born into this. He should be sticking with it. He's a, a traitor to the royal family, really. Oh, that's a very well. That's the strongest comment we've had tonight. It's a bit that's, uh, stronger than I would use, but I'm going to say that he's let beside Dan Hayden. Thank you for your call. Strong opinions on this, perhaps no surprise. You've been listening to the Nigel Farage Show. I'll be back on Sunday morning at ten o'clock. At ten tonight, it's Tom Swarbrick. But up next, it's Ian Dale. What's all these newspaper headlines I've got in front? Have you been causing trouble, Nigel? This was in August. I oh, criticised. Oh, right. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I criticised Harry and Meghan back in August, and I was lambasted for it. But I'm now pleased I said what I said because I sensed then, Ian, something was going wrong. Well, it certainly has, hasn't it? Uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, we will be talking about uh, the royal family, the news hour. But at uh, eight, Leila Moran is joining us, the Liberal Democrat MP who came out last week as a pansexual. No, me neither. I'd never heard of that phrase, so we'll learn a little bit more about it at 8. Looks as though Nigel's going to be listening for that entire hour. Uh, Coming up at 9, four candidates have passed.